Okay, the story on this engine, it's a 305 factory roller. And somebody had bought it thinking it was a 350. And the reason they sold it was because they didn't want a 305. And I'm pretty sure it was a running good engine whenever they took it apart. But as you can see, the bores got kind of rusty. Okay, so I got the rest of the parts that were laying in that oil pan. And it also came with a set of heads that are factory 305 heads. Alright, so I've decided I'm going to try to build that engine, right? So the first thing I have to do is inspect all the parts, go through it, see what's damaged, what's not. Okay, I have all my parts gathered here. I have eight of these things to hold the lifters in, in line. I only have 17 lifters. I'm, I'm missing one. And I got my pistons here. Here's the crank and here's the cam. I know this might look kind of overwhelming. It's really not. Building engines are actually very simple. To build a high horsepower, high RPM engine, yes, it, it could be very technical and, and precise. And, and, you know, that can be complicated. I understand that. But to build a stock factory one, it's not that hard. And to, the, the way I would say to, to approach it is don't think too much about everything. Concentrate on one thing at a time or one area at a time. Like in other words, forget about the heads, forget about the cam, concentrate on getting the crank. That's actually the first step. You have to put the crank in first and then put the pistons in. Concentrate on that part and get your, you know, in other words, concentrate on the rotating assembly first. And when you're done with that, move on to the next thing. Okay, so like I was saying, I believe this engine was perfectly running whenever it was taken apart. Maybe it had worn out rings or something, it was smoking, who knows. But it, it appears to be that it wasn't, it wasn't knocking. It doesn't have any spun bearings, it doesn't, um, well that's how it appears. I know it's rusty, it's kind of hard to tell. But this is the best thing, this is the best I can do. So, okay, so why that's significant? Okay, so what happens is whenever the engine starts knocking, it, it uh, kind of hammers this apart. And that's supposed to be able to distort the hole and I guess oh, make it an oval or something. Okay, so why that part is important, whether or not it had the spun bearing or not. Even though most of this is going to get remachined anyway, that's important because if this engine had a bearing that was like, like spun or out of place whenever they lock up or whatever, you might have discoloration. And if your rod has discoloration, the professionals say to replace it. But even a guy at a machine shop says as long as you just do a stock rebuild, they, they'll probably be okay. And I know several rods that have been discolored, and all they do is put new screws in there, get the rod resized, which means like fix this hole back to round, build engines like that. People do that all the time. If you're worried about it, if you're too worried about it and you think you have a high, if you're going to build a, a race car or something, you shouldn't even be using stock rods anyway. If you can't live with that, then just replace your rod whenever you do yours. But that, that's actually significant. I would probably reuse one even if it was discolored on a stock rebuild. But I would definitely put new bolts and get it resized. And like what I was looking for to determine that it wasn't knocking was that I've already looked at all the bearing surfaces. It's not pretty, but it's not really overly damaged. It's like, th this is, this is, uh, I'm not going to show every last one of them, but this is what almost all the bearings look at, look like. It's not perfect, it's definitely worn, but it's actually somewhat smooth. It's pretty, this is pretty typical wear of, a, of an engine like that. That was probably rebuilt years ago, or it's a factory uh, engine, I don't even know. Okay, a lot of the times the bearings will have it stamped in there, like if they're ten, ten thousandths under or whatever. Um, that's one indication if it's been rebuilt before or not. These don't say anything. I mean, they have numbers on them, but I don't know what they mean. But that's, that's not super important right now. These cap screws, they are directional. The rod is offset, so they do have to go on a certain way. It has these little things that hold the bearing. I don't even know what they're called but they both go on the same side. That's how the rod's supposed to, that's how the rod cap goes on. And if you didn't have it right, this wouldn't be smooth right there. So that's just one little detail. 
since, since all the rods appear like it wasn't knocking, none of them are discolored, the reason why that's important, that means that I'm just going to use, I'm going to use these rods like they are, as long as the pistons are good. To, to, like to look at a piston to inspect it, just kind of got to look at it, see if any damage is on it, they, they look fine. These little machine marks are still in it. So I'm going to, I'm only guessing, this is only uh, kind of speculating, but since this looks like that, and you can kind of see the machine marks on it, just a few little lines, I bet you these pistons are perfectly fine. If they, if, if they were really, you know, if, if this was really a high mileage worn out motor, the, this would probably be all rubbed very smooth and you would, see more, you would see more wear on it. But that doesn't guarantee anything yet. It still has to be checked. But that just, this, this is just the, I'm going to use a fancy word, preliminary checks. I'm definitely going to take more time and take a very close look at them. And one more thing, the ring, the ring lands or ring, whatever you call it, grooves, you kind of got to inspect that kind of stuff too. But all this stuff looks like it's fine. It almost looks like if um, nobody was to have left it in the rain where it got so rusty, that you could probably just stick it back together and probably be fine. So that's good for me. All right, I want to say one more thing about rods and stuff before I move on to the crank. Some people say that you have to replace the rod bolts every time you get it rebuilt and get it resized. If you want to be professional and build a hot rod motor or something, like uh, I'm sure you should, you could do that. But even in the service manual, nowhere have I found that it says that you need to replace the rod bolts or get them resized. It says to inspect them. Okay. But I'm still going to say that if you see discoloration or, or it was knocking, then yes, you, you should absolutely new bolts and get it resized. One more thing. If you're building a hot rod motor, you should throw this in the trash anyway because by the time you buy ARP bolts for like $60 or $70 a set and you get your rods resized, which is probably... I don't know, it used to be like $10 a rod or something, you're, you're going to have you're going to have enough money wrapped up in them to where like you might as well just buy a set of scat rods or something that has cap screws and something that has floating pins. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the crank. Do your own research, make up your own mind on how you want to go about that, I really don't care, but I'm using the stock rod bolt. I mean, the, I'm not putting new ones. Okay, moving on to the crank. It's rusty. All this, I don't even care to look at it. I don't care to try to polish it because since I was talking about that other stuff, I noticed this about. It. I just happened to glance over here and notice this. That's like the front. That's the front uh, main journal, and you can feel little grooves like it has wear on it. Like this is not acceptable. This is going to have to go to the machine shop. And since that's going to go to the machine shop. I'm going to let them check it, because it's, it's going to have to go no matter what. And that's why I say a lot of this stuff isn't as complicated as, as you think, or people think, because realistically, um, you don't have to know how to check this. You can plastic gauge it whenever you're assembling it. You take it to the machine shop, they'll, cr they'll check your crank for you, they'll tell you if it's, if it's actually uh, able to be a machined or turned, whatever you want to call it. And then they'll even sell you the proper undersized bearings to go along with it, and if you have any kind of questions, you can, you can, don't quote me on this one, but more than likely you could probably hand them all your parts and say, hey, can you check this stuff out for me? Make sure none of my rods are, you know, make sure everything is, is, is good. And they have like tools and stuff to, to measure stuff with. Or you could try to, or you could try to be smart and buy a mic and probably don't even really know how to use it or, but some people do that. Some people check their own stuff. But this is this is pointless. It's going to the machine shop anyway. But, it, but it, it also, so if these things have any kind of roughness or anything on them, it's not. It's it's a no go. This has to be almost a, a mirror finish, polished. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna make another useless video because basically all it's gonna turn into is take it to the machine shop. <laughs> this cam is rusty. I'm just gonna replace it. This is really cheap cam. It's a factory roller cam. But yeah, that's definitely a no-go. You can't put it in there like that with it rusty. 
All right, now we got the lifters. I went ahead and spun all of them. You could reuse use lifters as long as they're rollers and as long as everything is smooth on there. That has a little wear, wear mark on there, so I'll probably replace that one. You could buy these individually for like 8 or $9. So if you see any kind of roughness, this, is, this surface right here has to almost be like perfectly smooth, almost like a mirror polish almost. So if you see any rough marks on here or anything, any uh, flaws, or around the whole thing itself, just replace it. They're only like 8 or $9 a piece. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just get a new, a new, whole new set anyway, but, but I'm trying to build this engine as cheap as possible. But seriously, about any of this, it, but about any of this, if you're in doubt, just put new stuff in it and go ahead and, and spend money. Um, that, 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 that never hurts, except for your wallet, but, okay, and these things, I already looked at all of them. All right, so these little things that hold your lifters in line, I've already looked at all of them. Everything looks fine. Th this stuff usually is, is fine. But I'm going to go through and, and make sure all of them spin smoothly. Like it needs to be like silky smooth. Just like the surface needs to be silky smooth. Not like, not like that. That rust right there. That's really not that bad. It would probably be fine, but I don't know. I know a lot of people that probably would just put that in anyway. <laughs> Not me though. I'm better than that. It's probably kind of hard to see down in there, but all the boards are rusty like this. I don't have a hone. That can probably be honed, and that means that you could probably um, hone it, but then it would have to be checked. So what do we do? Take it to the machine shop and let them deal with it. Alright, one of the last things that I'm going to do before I take this to the machine shop is I'm going to visually inspect the block for any damage. Like all this stuff that should be machined, it should be smooth. You got to make sure, check for damaged threads. This bolt doesn't screw in easy. That could cause a problem. Don't force stuff in there like that. Make sure the threads are not damaged and then maybe run a, a tap through there but be very careful if you run a tap through your uh, bolts holes to clean them do not break one off in there be very careful be patient do not use any power tools to turn your tap or taps the, these are the main caps they have to go in the right spot you can't mismatch them they usually have an arrow the arrow that's right there It might not look like an arrow in the video, but in real life you can see that it's an arrow. The arrows go forward. The arrows point to the front of the block. But yeah, it's a good idea to visually inspect everything because that way you won't run a risk of wasting your time and possibly money. But yeah, since i got to take the crank to get it machined anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take this block. And especially if you don't have any history on the block, it's a good idea to take it anyway so that way they could pressure test it to make sure it's not cracked anywhere or anything like that. Anyway, I do believe this is a standard bore. It hasn't been bored before and, and so on, so it should be able to be fixable. But we'll just find out later. I'm going to have to stop this video right here because I don't know what the outcome is going to be about the crank. I'm sure it'll be good. But uh, real quick... If, as long as you do a stock rebuild and you put the factory rod, factory piss, and don't change anything, it shouldn't need to be rebalanced. It should be perfectly fine. If you change any component in it, like an aftermarket rod or aftermarket piss, and it's different, I think there's such thing as some stuff that's the same weight that are drop-ins that you don't have to get it balanced. And I don't know if that even exists with these older engines. That might just be LS stuff. I don't really know. Don't really care. But definitely if you change anything besides putting everything back how it was and where it was, then it probably should be balanced. This is probably not the best way to rebuild stuff. The best way to do it is to replace everything and put all the expensive stuff in it. But this is like the cheapest, the cheapest way they'll get you by. 
And I'm not, and I'm going to follow all the rules out of a service manual. Like in other words, if it's passable, I'll go ahead and use it, even if it's not perfect. Which, whenever you build an engine like that, usually they'll get you down the road for a few years, maybe 50, 60, 70 thousand miles, and they'll probably wear out again. They use, I don't, in my opinion, from what I've seen, usually when you do that, whenever you don't put nothing, whenever you don't replace everything brand new and machine, that maybe it doesn't last quite as long, but it'll be all right. Yeah, actually, I might just go ahead and take those pistons to the guy too, and everything. That way, I just let them. I'll just let them check everything. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. The end.